papers carefully, you will note that uh, on item 4, um, on page 23, paragraph 34, uh, there's a reference to my having supported the proposals uh, for that item. So when we get to that item, I will relinquish the chair and Councillor Aston will take over the decision on that item um, because could be deemed that I've already prejudged the uh, decision. Also on item seven, um, I just make a reference, there, is, there are representations from York Cycle Campaign. I'm not a member of the committee, but I am a long-standing supporter of York, York Cycle Campaign. So I just want to put that on, on record uh, as a non-prejudicial interest. Okay. Um, on item two of the minutes, um, I've just got one correction I'd like to make to the minutes, which is on page five. Um, in terms of the, the reason, which is right at the end, um, it, the reason stated to progress the majority views of residents consulted by removing long-term non-residential parking, but still allowing parents carers of York Stein School request, requested time limit for picking up and drop off. Um, I'd like to delete the uh, rest of that sentence because that relates to parking for the business outlets which wasn't a <coughs> uh, reason that um, decision was made on the basis because they've got their own parking separately so it's not really affected um, so I think it's best really for accuracy if we can delete that last part of that That's sentence right. okay so is that all right okay all right okay Thank you. So the next item we come to is public participation and I have several registered speakers. Um, the first um, speaker um, I've got is Chris Warriner who wants to, as landowner in relation to item 5, definitive map modification order for the footpath Chancery Lane to Bishop, Bishop Thorpe and Acaster Malbis. We have Chris Warren here. Yes. Do you want to come and join us at the table? Um, you have uh, three minutes to address the uh, meeting. If you want to use up to three minutes, that's entirely right. up to you. So, so. Um,
quite involved, isn't it? <coughs> yeah. And I said, Yeah, that's it. That's right. it. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Right. It's a bit of a rush job. So I think we yeah. about yeah about another thirty seconds or so. Oh, right. Okay. Exactly. Right. So right. Uh, I do object to the uncontrolled dogs and the uh, the abuse that you receive when you actually challenge their behaviour and cut his mouth. This is a personal object objection. Uh, as a red player. I actually object to the York City Council having to spend its money in order to restrict the environment for a vast majority of, uh, of very pleasant people who are only out, out for a stroll. And I've had some, some previous with the, uh, with the parish council and it's a problem official health and that. But so, uh, I prefer to have a yes, yes, yes. Uh, I have a large worry if livestock go back in the field, mm -hmm. then there'll be an enormous pressure on this track because over the years there's, there's an awful lot of, uh, of extra dogs, and we have the pressure of commercial dog walks as well. There's a lot of those now. Mm -hmm. this has been okay. Can on can you can you conclude? Come, come to the yeah, please. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I wasn't consulted. <laughs> and I don't know which landowners were consulted. I know when I asked about the field next to me, I was told that Mr. Masterman had been uh, consulted, but he doesn't own that one. It's always the phone that that was in Europe. It's anonymous as I think. Basically, as it is, it's, it's not a problem, but the dog fight power is a bit of a nuisance. Sorry, it can be a nuisance, but it's living like that. Day. Okay, thank you. Can I, before you. Leave it. Have the officers? Can I just ask? It, see if the officers have any questions they want to ask you for clarification. We are, we're not actually discussing that item as yet, but if there's questions we want to clarify, it might be helpful to do that now. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. okay. I spoke to Mr. Warren yesterday on the telephone, so um, I was broadly aware of the points he was going to make today, and I do have. Um, items that are, uh, or responses to those points that I'll raise when we get to item five. Okay, 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 that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the next speaker I've got registered is Councillor Mark Waters, who wants to address item six about the economy and place capital programme report. Um, you know the procedure, we'd like to yeah, use your three you minutes. Service. <laughs> in terms of page 55 and the bulk of the reduction scheme that's in the capital programme, I'd just like to support the forthcoming comments of the Parish Council Chair who's sat behind me. Um, this scheme, and it's all detailed out there if you'd like to pass those along, and let's be honest, it's only a minor road realignment, and it's been independently costed that you're seeing those things at 20 grand. And that money's been donated. I'll stress again, it's donated, given, it's not part of section 106, it's been gifted to all the parish council to get these works underway. And then what would we find? A dismissive response to all the parish council from a senior officer saying there's no city of York council money for the works, which will cost in the region of 60 grand when the council gets its hand on When I tried to question the officer concerned over this, my communication is just ignored. This scheme needs implementing as soon as possible, Executive Member. It's been hanging about in one form or another for over a decade. Ten years in which traffic, cutting through all bits of access Monk's Cross, has grown massively. No doubt encouraged by all the directional <coughs> signage on the A166, which we constantly request to be removed. The question of officers ignoring ward members' correspondence goes further than just this example, though. Recently, you were copied into email exchanges regarding the farce of the council coming round villages in my ward painting white centre lines on quiet rural roads when assurances have been given in the past about speed reduction team. This wouldn't happen because they accepted that unpainted roads contributed to keeping road speeds down. 
No wonder the responsible officer ignored my correspondence on that matter also. Thankfully, the assistant director is now going to instruct officers to produce a schedule of road lighting for ward councillors to see. And I hope that this is a consultation document intended to listen to ward councillors and parish councils. In a similar vein, last year saw the views of Dutch Parish Council and two ward councillors ignored when a ludicrous speed reduction scheme saw musical chairs be displayed <coughs> at public cost with road signs before road speeds increased and the signs were put back where they started. Public money wasted because officers and your predecessor wouldn't listen. So I hope you will listen now to requests for the VAS officers broke when messing about with the failed funding scheme to be replaced. Talking of your predecessor not listening, I had similar problems with the proposed enlargement of the Oswald 20 mile an hour zone, which had it gone ahead would have rid the streets of 37 signs and brought the bus routes under a 20 mile an hour limit. I take it as a new executive member of transport, you will be amenable to revisit those proposals, which I understand this morning from Alistair Briggs will be coming in front of you in September. Another angle from the previous incumbent was his approval last year of a street lighting policy that effectively removes member and parish council input. Perhaps you might like to review that policy in line with earlier iterations whereby consultation and flexibility was always at the heart of the policy. You might also like to consider the one fallout um, issue relating to adoption of that policy was the binning of the streetscape policy that was actually um, actually gone forward as part of the local plan. So I'm unsure as to the status of that document at the moment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. We'll note all those comments <coughs> and uh, responders accordingly. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So the next speech we've got is Peter Broadley from uh, Holtby Parish Council. Take a seat, you, we've got three minutes. Um, I'd just like to give you a little bit of the background on this junction in mm -hmm. Holtby. For the about the last 14 years which I've been on the Parish Council, this has been an ongoing concern, exacerbated now by the increase of traffic and such across. Um, I passed a map out that showed you where it was. Okay. Just okay. Six okay. Down there. Okay. Um, what happens is when people walk up the village, there's 14 houses now that are isolated in the village. Mm -hmm. People cannot walk up the village safely because of this corner. So you walk up one side, you've got to cross the road, there's nowhere to cross, there's no pedestrian mm -hmm. haven, so to speak. Um, but also, the way that it whips around on the corner means that there's a fast increase in speed for the lower half of the village. We've had speed things done by the Office of Council, and even with the percentile not on considerably higher than anywhere else. Um, also safety aspects, there's um, several holiday cottages down the bridge and also there's a cycle um, pods where people come, they come in the car generally park and they can go out on the bike, also hikers and they are there again because obviously they don't know the road like the locals do. Also on that junction there as part of the York Quay terminates and comes out straight on to that very uh, dangerous junction. We've had a kind offer of £25,000 from the um, Chris England and his family <coughs> to do development and weren't um, forced to pay this money. Um, but he's decided, because he's lived in the village all his life, and he's brought his family up there and his mother out, uh, that because he's made a bit of money out of it, he thought he would donate a bit to the thing. Mm -hmm. um, he's come up with costings, uh, council costings are obviously different, but nobody's actually seen the costings. We just have this fear about it. Mm -hmm. But I would think as a, an opportunity for the council and highways would be to take this money and actually make this work mm. uh, for the people of Holtby. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. Well, we'll certainly take those points in, into consideration. Thank you when we uh, look at that um, in a bit more detail outside the meeting. Thank you. Um, so the next speaker I've got, we're moving on to item uh, seven, the junction alterations. It's Councillor Peter Kilvane. Do you want to come and say your case? <laughs> uh, thank you, Chair, officers. Uh, 
Um, I support option three, as is the safest for most pedestrian and cycle friendly that's given. Uh, when the options were presented to Bishop Lord Trade, Traders Association, option three was also their preferred choice. If either option two or three are chosen, then we must take this opportunity to sort out the situation with the same three deliveries. At the moment, the delivery trucks regularly block the carriageway outside the store, photograph of it happening there. Uh, with cyclists and drivers waiting to turn right from Scarborough Road, this is an accident waiting to happen and a regular cause of congestion. With the roadway being altered, there must be an opportunity to create space outside the store that allows unloading while traffic moves freely and safely. Uh, local residents would be incredulous if we were to spend £165,000 and still have this ongoing problem. Uh, those living near Sainsbury's have long suffered noise disturbance caused by the deliveries, particularly in the area across the morning. Uh, the junction upgrade provides an opportunity to alter the prohibited loading times to make them more resident friendly. I strongly suggest that this is done and in full consideration of those living, uh, consultation with those living nearby. I recommend the alternative options put forward by the York Cycle Campaign for fully segregated cycle lanes. If this is not <coughs> possible, then I support the call for pre start lights uh, to improve safety for cyclists. In addition to this, I'd like you to investigate the use of flashing green cycle lights that allow cyclists to proceed at <coughs> once the pedestrian crossing is clear. This would allow cyclists to get clear of waiting traffic and avoid pinch points, such as the one found at the incline heading south or Bishop Thorpe Road. There is currently an issue with drivers exiting south onto Bishop Thorpe Road at speed, creating significant danger for traffic trying to come out of Charlton Street. Uh, there is also a well observed problem with drivers jumping the red lights on the pedestrian crossing in the middle of the shopping parade. I believe that both of these issues are caused by people putting their foot down to try and catch the green light that they can see in the near distance at the Bishop Road to Garcroft Road Junction. Uh, to counteract this, when the new lights go in, I believe they should be visored so that they cannot be seen until a driver is upon them. And finally, we must take this opportunity to sort out the cycle path and planting at the northern arm of the junction. The number of cycle rights needs to be increased and we should leave the cycle campaign's recommendation that cycle path and provision should be made for bikes of all different shapes and sizes. The current planting block sites for those leaving Bishop Road car parking needs to be moved. As ward councillors, we put forward a suggestion for this, but they've largely been rebuffed on financial grounds. Uh, we'd like officers to look at it again at this issue, and we're happy to discuss the possibility of contributing towards highways money if that helps solve the problem. If option three is chosen and a significant budget that comes with it, then residents will quite rightly expect to see some improvements in the overall public realm. Thank you. Uh, so officers, have any questions you want to ask? I'll uh, stop yeah, this one. To address those points. Okay, when we get to that item. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, next speaker I have is Jonathan Witts um, on the same item. Thank you. Okay. So, this is a main road in and out of York, and uses tourists, residents, and businesses. To quote the former councillor and chairman of the Bishop Road Trade Association, John Hayes. Stability road over a thousand commuters per hour at peak times in and around the junction. Option three at this is the worst option for all parties. What's been proposed as a quick win does not seem to fully take in the wider impact that this is going to have. Rather, this is not a short term expensive project that is going to have a negative impact on that life. What is the problem you are attempting to solve with this proposed solution? Removing the left turning lane on Scarborough Road will have a cumulative impact on the immediate and wider area. This will cause traffic to be backed along up along all routes around the junction. Traffic is already backed up beyond the church on Scarborough Road, due to the lights of Bishop Shore Road, Nunnery Lane, and both ends of the bridge on Bishop Gate Street. During delivery times on the same bridge, traffic turning onto Scarborough Road is currently at the Grand Forest, due to the left turning lane. Removing this third lane will prevent this inevitably stopping all traffic entering Scarborough Road, therefore the junction, essentially creating a complete gridlock around the southeast side of the city. This is going to have a huge impact on the air quality due to Traffic. The inclusion of a new public crossing at the junction may improve crossing time for pedestrians. However, as a resident and daily pedestrian of the area, I can say with confidence that wait times are not extremely crossing this road. The inclusion of a new public crossing uh, also, sorry, also taken into account the options available with the public crossing at the same route on Bishop Thor Road, the Zebra Crossing on Nunnery Lane, and the end of Bishop Thor Road, uh, the public crossing proposal, which is 200. Again, stop sign traffic and standing traffic will have negative environmental impact. A better option, not suggested, could be 
to introduce speed bumps on Bishopdorf Road and Scarborough Road to slow down traffic while allowing it to flow. Half of the Scarborough Road, uh, road in the area by the trees and opposite the same trees is already at least twice as by the regular people. This non area becomes congested for pedestrians, so there is already a path that avoids this corner of the road through the trees. While the tenant's thermal response is provided during the stakeholder consultation, the one that can help the best interest in the chairman of the Bishop Door Road Trace Association. These groups, coupled with a limited number of responses, do not fairly represent the full picture of users of residents or of the road area of White City. Any change to this junction will affect roads throughout the city. The surveys carried out by a graduate student employed by the Trade Association appear to have exclusively asked pedestrians in the immediate vicinity, not road users, not commuters, and not white residents of the area. It seems like a very expensive project with more negative effects than positive, either change for change sake rather than a pragmatic approach to improving the area for pedestrians and vehicles does not appear to be considered any county alternative. Thank you very much. Officer, are there any questions? Do you have questions? Okay. Thank you. Um, and then last week we have Peter Sheaf, who speaks on behalf of York's <coughs> cycle campaign. Again, you have uh, three minutes to tell us your thoughts. Sorry, uh, apologies for the um, Great, thank you. Uh, very interesting to hear the previous speaker talk about wider impact because we are all about wider impact. Um, that needs to be considered here environmental, carbon, social, uh, and policy. So, um, yes, I'm speaking on behalf of the cycle campaign. Uh, on this item, which is a very complex issue with many related policy and legal duties on the council. So we submitted a detailed written statement um, to advance the hope of the new approach to the room. Um, it sets up these duties in detail and why not view they orbit towards the implementation of the option we advanced in the consultation. The key features of this option were larger ASLs, cycle specific green phases and a southbound segregated cycle mode, allowing cyclists to pass the lights in safety. The option has been christened the Danish option, which we welcome by council officers, and they address that in some detail in their report. Um, we continue to think that the Danish option is the best for this junction, but today suggests that this decision is postponed until there is greater clarity on the access arrangements for the proposed chemical flood defences, which surely will have a significant impact on traffic in this part of York. In the interim, we ask you to direct your officers to re-explore the Danish option with us and the option with authors. And other groups so it can be implemented in line with the duties on the council we describe in our written statement, but we'll also touch on here. It is, after all, worth reflecting on the fact that you are being asked to make a decision on behalf of the city or council, and it's important that you have all the relevant information to hand. So, these duties we feel are climate emergency motions that commit the council to achieve a carbon neutral walk by 2030. Transport is the biggest emitter of CO2 in the UK and take up ultra low emission vehicles in York is very low. Less than 0.25% uh, of all vehicles registered in York. We need to genuinely prioritise walking cycling for it to decarbonise transport, which in our view, the Danish option moves towards. The Health and Social Care Act 2012, which places the local authorities under the duty to improve the health of their citizens, including a range of indicators that greater physical activity such as cycling is free. This is backed by the aims of the York Council's Director of the Public Health Report 2017-18. Uh, thirdly, the Equality Act 2010, which outlaws discrimination on the basis of sex, visibility, and eye characteristics. We explain in our written statement why we think uh, option three, for example, risks breaching that. 30 seconds. Okay. Um, the Traffic National Act 2004, which requires local authorities to ensure the road networks are used efficiently by all kinds of traffic. Also, to Further things um, that are important to note. One is that the experience of London has shown that segregated cycleways reduce air pollution, not increase it. That's because more people cycle, not drive. There is publicly available research showing this in my period of London. Um, secondly, uh, the absence of national standards in segregated cycleways has not prevented London, Leeds, other cities, and city or council so either from proposing segregated cycleways or introducing them. Um, anyway, so finally, we believe that these duties, policies, and facts all towards the eventual implementation of the Danish option. If the council officers disagree, we can't hear any detail why not. Is there legislation that cancels the act I mentioned? 
Or is there transparent compiled publicly available research? Sorry, can you wind up now? Okay. So for now, we ask you to postpone this decision until there's greater clarity on how the access arrangements for the chemical subsequent will affect traffic Thank you. I don't know if you actually have any questions. Okay. Right. okay. right, so that concludes the speakers. Um, I appreciate that it's difficult to try and get all the things you want to say in three minutes, having plenty of experience of that myself. Um, so I'll now move on to item four, um, which is the definitive map modification order in relation to Windmill Lane. And I believe this is the point I need to hand over to Councillor Aston to uh, <coughs> lead on this item. Do you want to the papers? Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, very, very much. Ple pleased to be here. I'm pleased that the, the item I'm substituting on didn't have a whole array of public speakers. So from that, I assume it will be fairly straightforward. But uh, as Councillor De Bruyne just, just said, item uh, four, uh, and I should be handing over to, to Russell to, to introduce the paper. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, so this is a supplemental report relating to a uh, previous report presented to the executive member back in February, where we sought authorisation to make a definitive modification order to record a footpath through the woodland beside Windmill <coughs> in Heslington. Um, at the time, the order was not particularly well supported with evidence and would not have met the uh, test that you were required to apply at this stage, the test for confirmation. However, as a consequence of the publicity that the order received, um, we actually received a substantial amount of uh, additional uh, evidence and nor did we receive any objections so we the council is now in the position where we have an order that has sufficient evidence to meet the statutory test of being a public footpath on the balance of probability and we have no objections um, recorded against it within the relevant period um, so it is open to the uh, to the count for the for you to authorise the council to confirm that and then it will be recorded on the definitive map, signposted and protected for future generations. Thank you very much. So the, the recommendation in the, the, the paper for the record is that the executive member authorises confirmation to accord uh, the route uh, and I'm happy to, to, to do so. Thank, so you, very thank you very much. I shall now leave you in Councillor de Gorn's hands for the, the rest of the items. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Right. So uh, we we'll now move on to item five in that case, page 27. Uh, definitive map modification order application to record public footpath between Chancery Lane, Bishopthorpe, and Acaster Melbis, um, which is in page 27. So do we have an officer update on that? Yes. Thank again. you, Chair. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is to record uh, uh, well, this report relates to three applications made by Bishop Thorpe Parish Council for various parts of the route extending from uh, Chantry Lane in Bishop Thorpe down to the existing footpath, um, A Castor Malvis number three. Um, on investigation, um, of the three applications, one of them is uh, found has not been duly made, which was the application received in 2006, mm -hmm. and in addition only relates to the land uh, covered between uh, points A and B on the map, which is uh, consecrated ground, it's Church of England um, mm -hmm. land. So, um, as explained in the report, the land over which rights can be brought into being through use. Mm -hmm. This is why the uh, recommendation option A is to authorise the making of um, a definitive map modification order to record the route from point B down to point D, mm -hmm. uh, which would satisfy two of the three applications we received, uh, but to reject um, the 2006 application on those grounds that it wasn't duly made because there was no evidence submitted with it and it relates to own, only relates to <coughs> consecrated ground. Um, 
The evidence that is before us at the moment certainly meets the current test that you're required to apply, which is that of a reasonable allegation that a right of way exists over the route, and also uh, further the, uh, the evidence does meet the statutory test for confirmation at a later stage. Um, so assuming no further evidence comes in or anything to significantly change, the, the council will be in a position to go on and confirm that. So that covers the report, really. Mm -hmm. uh, to address Mr. Warren's specific um, mm -hmm. points now. So I'm going to start with his last one. So his last one was, why are we spending money doing this? And the short answer to that is that we are required to do so by the law. Um, <laughs> This was the next one that came up to the top of the list to be dealt with, right. so we're dealing with it. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of if, for uh, Mr. Warren has cited the possibility that an adjacent field, which um, is uh, sometimes, well, at the moment does not have any livestock in it, were it to have livestock in it, that would increase the pressure on the public right of way and I would accept his view on that because that's he's, he's the local, he knows what happens on the ground. Mm -hmm. If the route is recorded as a public right of way, the council is then in a position to use its powers as highway authority to take steps to alleviate, mitigate um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and otherwise try and assist there as far as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and really that same comment relates to uh, Mr. Warren has spoke about provision of dog bins, wardens, etc. At the moment, um, this route is not recorded on public right of way. Everyone who I've consulted with, which is all the landowners affected, plus the user groups, plus various other people, have said the, the, the sort of the overriding reaction was, is, it is a public right of way. Mm. Why do you need to sort of record it? Everyone accepts it as such. Mm -hmm. um, but once it's recorded, then again, the council is in a position, if it wants to, or the Bishop Thorpe Parish Council as well, mm -hmm. maybe in a position to look at dog bins and, and those sort of things. But that's mm -hmm. not that's not the matter before that's that's that I'm yeah. presenting at the moment. But once it's recorded as a public right of way, further things can be done. Okay. okay? Um, so uh, that's about all I've got to say on the matter. The only other question which was raised was about the consultation I think Mr Warren has said that he wasn't aware now is there a problem in terms of recording of who owns I the land or no I checked the record I did consult Mr Warren you did okay. yes um, and also yeah, he's on he's on my list right. for okay. good or ill <laughs> um, but did you actually have a response from Mr Warren before? No, not until today? he telephoned in. Oh, so I see. Okay. It's possible we've got a different address which I can talk to. Mr. Yeah, Warren, right. So we have made yes. reasonable efforts to yes. contact all the land landowners. That's yes. basically what I want to make sure that we have yes. done that. Yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> so I think um, having looked at the... As, as, as I understand it, and I think it, it's difficult for people who are... Uh, as you've suggested, it's not always uh, that clear for people to understand that, as, as stated in the report, the onus is on uh, providing evidence that a right of way exists. Not, not we're not creating a right of way. A right of way is created through usage, That's right. and and this is the evidence that that usage has existed in the manner which is necessary to establish it was a right of way in existence. So, um, basically, the evidence, I, I think, as you, you've intimated, it is quite um, compelling. If you look at the uh, what chart is on paragraph 17, there's a record of, of usage by different individuals and the period of time that that's uh, applied. Uh, and so I am, I am happy to approve the uh, recommended option option A to make the order um, for that route, as has been suggested, uh, excluding the bit which is over consecrated land. So that's from from D to B, but not A to B. Yes, is that? That's correct. That's correct. Okay, so I'm happy to approve approve that. Right. So then we we'll move on to the next item, which will be. Um, item six, the uh, economy in place, transport capital programme, pages 41 to 58. 
Um, and I believe this is mostly here for um, this is mostly here for a matter of record about the, the situation uh, in terms of the capital program. Um, am I right in thinking that this is normally reported to the scrutiny committee as well? Correct. Yeah. So, so they have that opportunity um, to comment and ask questions about it at the scrutiny committee. It's a, it's a matter of uh, significant public expenditure, the capital program for transport. So, in, the, on, uh, in addition to effectively the normal cycle of reporting, the transport team provide this additional report on capital spend so that the public can keep abreast of where schemes are, particularly of uh, the work schemes that are of interest in their area. Mm -hmm. um, and in that regard, uh, obviously this is highlighted <coughs> to the um, Parish Councils of Olds Baldwick and the Parish Council itself that the Holtby scheme is, uh, appears on list. Right. Uh, that scheme is appearing on there because of the um, prospect of a, a donation from the local resident. Uh, it's rightly been stated it isn't a Section 106 requirement. And officers are currently working up uh, the extent of that scheme in terms of uh, the practical practicalities of living on ground, consulting with the uh, statutory services, because mm -hmm. uh, as you'll be aware, Councillor De Gaulle, that a considerable cost of a, 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 a relatively minor movement mm -hmm. of curb line can be dependent can, on what's underneath it. Can be dependent on what's underneath it. So that, that work is uh, coming forward and obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, once we've got uh, an accurate costume, we'll be having discussions with yourselves, the parish council, the fact ward councillors about how we effectively collect sufficient funds effectively to achieve that work, right. uh, uh, subject to your agreement okay. that that work should progress. But right, so, uh, that so in, in, in relation to Holtby, that yeah. is being, being yeah. looked at and we will address yeah. the detail of that. And in respect to the other, other matters, obviously, uh, as Councillor Waters noted, uh, the Assistant Director uh, is uh, addressing some of the matters that he raised to the extent that they, there are issues that he uh, wishes you, you to consider going forward in terms of uh, revision of previous policies then obviously we'll be guided by yourselves mm -hmm. uh, as to the executive's uh, wishes as to reports to be brought forward during the future. Right. Well certainly in, in relation to, I'm aware of the, the arguments in, in relation to lining and refresh, refreshing of yes. linings and yeah. so on and I, I, I do think um, I mean particularly in a rural location um, if there have been previous agreements and understandings yes. with parish councils we need to try and respect yeah. that and, and make sure that the yeah. communication yeah. is is there with parish councils yeah. or councillors whoever indeed the um, so, uh, yeah, the assistant director has made that commitment to, that, to, that for that to occur addressed. Um, the second point which was raised also was about the street lighting policy and reference to the <coughs> streetscape policy. And that although you know, a previous administration has agreed a policy, it may be that we can um, look at that again as a new administration just to see where we're up to at some point in the future. Obviously, it's not for this, this it's meeting. Not for, but, it's not for this meeting, but we'll but, obviously have, have further briefings with you on those matters and then you can okay. deliberate and decide how you wish to proceed. Okay, right, thank you very much for that. Um, in terms of the paper here, there is certainly sets out a significant, as you said, a significant spending. 2018-19, um, there had the, it was a Webby Road roundabout, the Scarborough Bridge, which is now the footbridge and cycle bridge, is now open, yeah. operational. Um, upgrade for six um, junction traffic lights, um, the Fosgate improvement has been done and we've got further consultation on that in terms of the pedestrianisation, I believe. Um, now, if you'd like some further detail... Uh... Uh, sorry, just to introduce myself, Patricia Barrett, Trish. presenting the Catholic Programme today. Oh, right, OK. And just to answer what Neil was saying about the Holtby uh, scheme, we do have an application for the Programme for Development of Data Reduction Speed Magic Scheme, which is where the Speed Building Work Neil referred to being funded from this financial year, mm -hmm. pending a decision on funding the scheme that's developed. Right, and, and that will, um, obviously the Fosgate is part of the city centre, and I'm aware a number of, of sort of reviews taking our place in the city <coughs> centre, so presumably it would link in with some of those as well. And the Fosgate pedestrianisation scheme? Yes. Yes, I mean obviously it is being considered as part of the wider work towards the Castlegate Gate Racing 
materials together. But that's following the fast gate of the development approval staff journey. I plan to implement the external agency subject approval. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, do you know when we're due to start? I thought it was August. Was yes, it a bit? consultation. Consultation, so, so, so yes. The executive yes, that's instructed mean, yeah. officers to undertake a consultation, then mm -hmm. once that consultation is to complete, we'll bring back the findings to yourself. And as Trisha mm -hmm. said, there's considerations around the broader Castle Gateway uh, mm -hmm. scheme and the links with Piccadilly yeah. cycleways, etc. Okay. that we've uh, obviously so working, working through to make sure that we have an integrated approach. Uh, has been so okay. preset suggested by the speakers. We we do have to take a view on a citywide basis, and we we do do so. Mm -hmm. um, also, note there's reference to um, on page forty three the first phase of program of school bus exhaust refits, which obviously ties in with our air quality objectives Correct. and in in uh, getting better quality buses on school services. Um, just sort of another point I was going to raise on page 44, paragraph 17, um, there's reference there to the Clean Bus Technology Fund, yep. which was carried forward for conversion of the two sightseeing buses. Now yep. I'm conscious that at least one of them still hasn't been converted. Have yep. we <coughs> got a date when that's going to happen? Uh, I can obviously check up on that. I I think could, I think, you know, because it, it, it does. It's a, yeah, it's Challenge a, the Trade Descriptions Act. It says it, you know, a yeah. clean electronic bus, but it is got clearly got diesel yeah. engines still operating within the vehicle. So we can. Um, just to say that the city sightseeing will prefer the last two months of converted school buses to be converted to Right. Right, because next year is the clean air, air, so, air zone comes into implement, in effect, so they have to do it by then, it's given where they operate, don't they? Yeah. Well, they have to have a commitment in place, the clean air yeah. zone, so effectively, yes, we'll be looking yes. for them to do that. Um, moving on, par paragraph 19, there's reference to the ZAR programme, Traffic Signals Asset Renewal. Yeah, um, on the agenda Which today. is at nine, nine locations. In addition to the one we've got on the agenda today, I presume the other ones will be um, scheduled. I just, I think, can we make sure that all councillors are notified of what's in the programme for this year within, within yes. our programme, just so that if there's discussion about opportunities to yes. do things at the yes. same time, we can make sure Absolutely. that... Absolutely, all councillors will be informed that we are uh, looking at a certain area and be given the opportunity to input into that. Mm -hmm. Not all of the schemes on that list will necessarily come to this session. Some of them are too minor. Right, Although okay. We have that discussion. Yes. And you can make yeah. a decision on which way ones you wish to do so. That's fine. Thank you. Um, right. And there's also reference to, again, this one might not be on the, on the list, but I do note on paragraph 25 the Stonebow Peace and Green work has, has slipped into the current year. I think it might be that the cycle campaign would want the opportunity to comment yeah. on that because I'm aware when I was on the planning committee that approved that, I wasn't happy with it. So and that, and that links I did raise to some the, concerns yeah. to look at the design of that in yeah, relation that to, to the cycle the, route. The Fosgate, Piccadilly, yes. Cross City opportunities that we've yes. got coming forward. So if we could certainly look at that one. Um, and then on paragraph 28, there's reference to unadopted roads, which I know is uh, you know, an, a, of concern uh, to people who live on those roads in particular. But um, if, there's, if there's any opportunities we have to try and tackle the issues, we, we, I mean, I don't know whether that would need a separate paper on that. Um, yeah, we, can, we, can, that. we can have a, a discussion with yourselves as to whether you wish to have a report, a number of reports yes. that have been brought forward, uh, consultations have been undertaken of, with residents on a number of streets as to their uh, willingness to participate in mm -hmm. uh, a, um, a process towards adoption yeah. of the highway yeah. uh, and no uh, street has yet met the council's criteria as uh, a willingness for those residents to mm -hmm. participate because obviously 
whilst uh, there is sometimes a desire, you know, I say sometimes because not all residents do desire yeah. to be on an adopted highway, there can be a significant cost. cost. Um, yeah. And the um, prob part of the problem is it's apportioned according to the frontage partly, length, isn't it? it which is, doesn't um, necessarily accord to the means of ability to pay for yeah. Uh, but generally speaking, the residents have made uh, on, uh, a purchase of their property on the basis that their property is on a normal adopted highway and that's reflected in their the mm. residential the values and, so and in the deeds and mm. their obligations that come as landowners with uh, mm -hmm. But obviously there is a council policy in place uh, mm -hmm. and we can obviously if you wish to consider that, that to be reviewed then that would be a matter for yeah. your consideration. I'm, I'm, a, I'm also conscious that um, that one particular unadopted road does link to the access to potential access to York Central on Wilton Rise. Indeed. Which yeah. is a popular yeah. cycle route already. It yeah. is, indeed. So uh, it's a matter so that, that will have to be dealt that will with. be one that would need to be looked yeah, at. It would be a matter that will have to be dealt with in the reserve matters application for the renewal of the Cinder Lane Bridge because right. obviously that would significantly enhance that cross city routage and yes. the authority might wait, what, wish to take a view on Wilton Rise, not necessarily adoption, but certainly it's enhancement certainly. of the condition of a private road mm -hmm. with consent. Yes. It, would be, it might be that it's a... Obviously, it'd be in negotiation a, with the residents. Potentially, but, yeah. or, and it could indeed be a developer requirement <coughs> that the authority puts on the developer that they undertake that negotiation with the local residents to enhance that route. Yeah, thank you, that's, that's helpful. Sorry, there were just a few sort of particular no, issues yeah, yeah. that that's, seem to be it's useful, useful to, to discuss it in a public to, forum to make them public as you say so we have um annex one has got the list of the capital program and we've got a full list in of um yeah, so and the app. Okay, right. On, on, on that basis, and I'm happy to approve the recommendation, which is to approve carryover schemes and adjustments, and to note the increase in the 2019-20 uh, capital programme, subject to approval by the executive. Okay, so I'm happy to approve that. So that brings us to agenda item seven: um, junction alterations, Bishop Thorpe Road and Scarfrock Road, and uh, obviously we've heard the, the speakers um, <laughs> and we'll yeah. let's just introduce sorry, to the right chair uh, um, I think and it will be picked up on shore by the officers but the programme as you've noted in the capital programme is a traffic signal asset renewal programme yes. it isn't a junction upgrade or a cycle, cross cycling initiative uh, it is a question of refreshing assets and taking opportunities for minor alterations Yes. Uh, at the same time. Um, the sums of money in respect of highway works always seem incredibly large to uh, in, you know, private citizens. Um, yeah. However, when you consider the, the asset base that we're looking at is over £1.2 billion pounds worth of asset as a highway, uh, the, and the infrastructure, and particularly the increasing, uh, should we say, the technological in, uh, requirements of a highways infrastructure I mean that the individual items are, are expensive mm -hmm. um, but obviously they have to be fit for purpose um, so whilst the sums might seem big and uh, the sums are relatively small in relative to the con the aspirations that have been allayed uh, by or re reviewed by the members of the public in terms of whole city cycling schemes etc those those schemes in themselves be yes. multi-million pound schemes but uh, as you are aware uh, councillor de Gaulle, the council does have a local transport <coughs> plan that does prioritize those matters it does have mm -hmm. an air quality uh, management plan that again also does address those matters and we we're taking those responsibilities very seriously on a cross city wide basis an individual junction renewal is is not the place to have that broader strategic uh, debate over uh, mm. where we're going as a, as a city. Yeah, so we, we, it is obviously the fir first and foremost replacing 
the signals, but it's looking for the opportunity rather than having additional costs coming back Correct. to see whether there are adjustments yeah. that can be yeah. made that will benefit well, all, all yeah. the users. So I'll hand to Christine if I may yeah. to so talk about the details. Could I just want, whilst I remember, just mention para paragraph 78, I think there's a type of error there. I think it should read the narrowing of a roadway rather than narrowing of a footpath, because I'm not aware we're proposing to narrow a footpath. Correct, yes. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, yes, so okay. if you want to... Well, we have been introduced, but just for the sake of the record... Sorry, yes. Uh, Christian Wood, I'm the Smart Transport Program Manager, and this is Stuart Andrews, the Project Manager, specifically for this. Thank you. So, uh, there's uh, been quite a few issues raised by the speakers here, and we also received a written statement on the off-site campaign this morning. Um, so I, I made an effort to summarise the issues that have been raised and address each one. Mm -hmm. um, quite often, Neil has already pointed to one of those issues. Um, the speaker was asking why are we doing this. It seems like a lot of money. Just to elaborate on what he mentioned, uh, the reason we do this is the site itself, the assets, the symbols, they are life expired, they're difficult to maintain, and they will start working um, within the near future. We need to replace them so that we're not in a situation whereby they're out of order for a serious amount of time. The work's involved in the roadway, <coughs> to refresh ducting, and placing um, sensors, street furniture, um, relining, and similar works. So in that context, the costs here are on a, 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 what you'd expect for such a, a sign of scheme. To address the other points that were we'll made, and to summarise the written statement made by the York Cycle Campaign. Um, of the three options, they prefer option three. That does appear to be a common thing we've had through the consultation. If any of the three options were to be forwarded, option three is the preferred option. Um, they have suggested, so when I say they are going to the outside of the campaign, um, that this decision be postponed until final four. Bloody defence plans are confirmed. Um, we had a, an internal discussion this morning to see what the implications of this scheme might be on this junction and without going into too much detail we don't believe that there, there is, it's necessary to postpone this decision based on those works mm -hmm. um, it can be <coughs> incorporated um, there is not really any abortive works that we can achieve through this that we're aware of can i just on that one um ask what what are we envisaging the time scale for this work? Would it be done before Christmas? Or do you think? I mean, and how long how long is the disruption going to take place? We have um, a plan down for the disruption Yes, the actual work. I mean, I'm conscious also yeah, about the Christmas. No, sort we're, of, we're starting the yeah. uh, October work to complete within six weeks. Right. Okay. And just as a steer, the past Zara work that we've carried out, the overall majority of them have the concrete. Right. Yeah. Um, to address some of the other issues raised, uh, those additional requests that we uh, go back to the in order to re evaluate uh, the Danish style scheme that they have proposed. Um, this is one we have looked at in, in great detail, and mm -hmm. I would say that the content of this report, uh, we still stand by that, sections 93 to 95. Mm -hmm. The evaluation we carried out. On many aspects of that proposal, it indicates that that um, solution would increase pedestrian delay times, it would increase bus journey times, it would increase general traffic delays, it would make local air quality worse, especially in the Bishop Court Road Shops area. Um, I understand that um, there are objections to that conclusion, but we're confident that we carry out a significant amount of work on that in a, in a proper manner with appropriate persons and methods, and that is the conclusion mm -hmm. I would still put. So can I just clarify in, in very simple terms, because I, I understand the, the concept here is talking about having a, a segregated southbound lane. Is <coughs> that, that right, isn't it? A seg four, there's four cycles. But in terms of the calculations that you've put forward comparing the Danish style with option three, um, in the southbound direction, option three gives you the measure is probably irrelevant really, but it's 8.8 .8 in the morning peak and 10 uh, southbound uh, under option three. And the Danish style is 23 or 28 southbound. So it's a massive 
increase in impact on traffic flows. So I don't know if you, are you able to just explain why that yeah, so should be so significantly different? The uh, proposal submitted by the Oxford Angle campaign, you've probably seen this previously, um, it, it consists of this uh, overview of the junction with some um, lines wrong as a suggestion as to yeah. how it might work. That was taken by the design engineers to be made into a, a viable solution. Mm -hmm. um, and through that method, this is the conclusion they came to. We don't have the design engineers to, today, and I wouldn't suggest we particularly no. want to go into okay. detail. Um, but this, as illustrated, is not buildable. Um, a scheme similar to this that tries to achieve the same aims yes. is achievable, but has the impacts. Um, I see. So it's a different version, that's <laughs> in a way, to, to achieve that aim, but through a different method, which it has bigger impact on the junction. The not feasible is the, the two lanes southbound would not be possible with a completely segregated cycle lane. You'd have to lose a southbound lane, which is where all the delays occur. Right. Okay. That was a better response. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's all right. So, sorry, I was trying to keep it not too technical, but at least so people can understand why that it really <coughs> is is so different in terms of the traffic impact. Mm. Okay. Thank um, you. Sorry, do you want to carry on? The York Cycle Campaign and Mr. Sheep have highlighted the existing climate emergency as support for their proposal, um, as well as public health legislation, references to air quality, traffic management legislation, and quality legislation. Um, we believe the intent to highlight the urgency of the climate emergency is very much accepted. Um, and we understand their desire to see significant citywide initiatives to tackle this issue. Again, echoing what Neil has already mentioned, we see that work from part of the authorities' piece on working towards a carbon zero city, as mm -hmm. has been um, mentioned previously. It has to be a, a, a more all encompassing solution rather mm -hmm. than um, trying to tweak at the edges on individual decisions. Yes. Um, and to finish up on that particular point, uh, we, we simply we don't accept there are any legal issues relating to the option proposed, um, as highlighted in the submission. We reviewed those. Um, yeah. and, and all I would comment in respect to the legal uh, obligations, the council has many tens of hundreds of legal obligations, and they are often uh, diametrically opposed in their in their outcomes. Mm -hmm. So it ultimately uh, requires a, a balanced decision mm -hmm. uh, to be. To but be I made. would be right in saying that any. Any project is impact assessed and the safe, safety um, audits yeah, yeah, done at the different stages, yeah, aren't our, they? Our, prim yeah, our primary objective in respect of highway works is the Highways Act and our obligations as a highways authority and, that, and then effectively there, thereafter you pick up the equalities at the legislation and like I say a whole raft of other legislative mm -hmm. requirements that come into, into play on authorities. Uh, but the primary function of the highway is the highway and therefore is measured by the Highways Act and the guidances that go through <coughs> as officers have indicated whilst uh, from a, should we say, a layman's perspective you might be able to get additional lanes in or you might be able to ease traffic we, we, we're bound by regulation so the, mm -hmm. the officers are uh, not effectively yeah. using their own discretion they're, they're using statutory guidance Right, so um, I have just continue. Um, the proposal has very uh, specific suggestions on alterations to the design in terms of um, composition of cycle box layouts and mm -hmm. uh, very detailed suggestions. Um, clearly, we haven't had the opportunity to put that through the design team yet, but we can absolutely do so at the following stage in the detailed design process. Okay, so, so we are able to look at some of the adjustments. Additionalities. Beyond the broad principle of, of, of how option Absolutely. one, two, or three, basically. Yeah. The decision we're asking for you today is on the, um, the principle layout of the junction. Yes. The yeah. specific details come in the following stage. Okay, I understand <coughs> that. And just to pick up on, um, I did actually, I don't need the photo, I went and had a look last night in the Sainsbury's lorry, we just sat there. So I was able to watch for about 10 minutes how the train, but it was quite relatively late, I think it was probably about half past six, so the traffic wasn't that busy, but the, the uh, situation in terms of loading is sort of as, as described that the more aware motorists tend to hand 
that hang back if the light's on the red to allow space for traffic coming the other way. But if someone is completely oblivious and takes up the right turn lane, then it is more difficult for traffic coming around the corner to actually get through. Um, so I think that is something that you said you would be able to look at in terms of the detailed curb alignment to try and ensure that even if it's reduced to single lane, the opportunity is taken to allow you know, a car width past um, a delivery lorry, I'm accepting that you're not they're going to be able to provide enough space for every vehicle to get through. But The, the options proposed to improve the situation. Right. Um, we felt that we had to still raise that an issue because none of the options removed it completely. Um, and you are correct in saying that we will uh, maximise the space available to get past that vehicle during the detailed design stage. However, mm -hmm. we can't commit to saying that we're able to completely remove the issue. Right. Yeah. All I would add to that, and it would be a, a matter for further consideration beyond this scheme, obviously, mm. um, we've got... No, I think we are moving the kerb line. That was the Sorry, point. Yeah, so, absolutely. So it's or, a question of where you put the new kerb line. Absolutely, so. I agree, agree that. And it's just to the extent that you wish to consider, uh, obviously, the, the Sainsbury's provides a local amenity uh, mm -hmm. for, for, for the locality, but obviously what we could, uh, if you were if you were wish to do is have a look at the opportunity for waiting time and loading and unloading restrictions because as mm -hmm. a highway authority yeah. you can impose uh, mm. as you that would be subject to consultation with ward councillors ward councillors and indeed sainsbury's yes, uh, as to the, uh, the the ability for them to carry on their operation so yes. there's an interesting balance between <coughs> having a local facility there that is obviously enjoyed by the locality mm. and the successful economic operation of it uh, and whether or not as an authority we choose to restrict uh, where that vehicle can park to load yes. in a safe manner yeah. so you know there's, there are opportunities beyond, beyond physical just physical, physical interventions see, there's yes. regulatory interventions that you could okay. consider at a later okay. date okay uh, moving on i'm going to address many of the issues okay. thank you Can I just, on that particular point, <coughs> I seem to remember the, the, the intention is to link the pedestrian crossing to the, the junction, is that correct? In terms of... Both sides will so, be connected to... So that they can avoid them coming on and creating a backlog into the... You know, it's just what I mean. I mean, obviously, it depends on how congested it is, but... And minimise the time number of times when the, the in one junction impacts on the other. The short answer to that is yes. <laughs> okay. Um, they will both have a connection into the council's traffic management computer system located mm -hmm. within the control centre, whereby the network management officers will make various um, changes to the network to, to get that to operate as possible. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There was. Um, a request to in include public realm improvements within these works. Um, previous discussions have been had with local ward councillors um, who had requested that we um, do some works that could be described as landscaping uh, and public realm improvements at the site. They were initially drafted up and costed at approximately £20,000. We, um, we didn't proceed that any further as it was seen as out of scope of the project. Okay. And that amount uh, of money could be spent on a replacement of the entire pedestrian crossing in another location that would have been yeah. the scope of the project. Um, mm -hmm. Naturally, the, the overall scope of ZAR um, can be discussed and can be negotiated for mm -hmm. Would there be future opportunities for ward councillors to, if they were to uh, be awarded, given the greater budgets by full council? And obviously, the members have recently made budget adjustments to. To retrospectively make those public realm adjustments, or well, we would assume they could. Where a, where a ward council, uh, where a ward budget is, is contributed, that obviously <coughs> changes that decision. Yeah. Thank you. Um, can I raise a couple of other top technical questions? If it, 
Um, Councillor Kilbane mentioned a couple of other things. Um, I think the flash suggestion of flashing green, presumably if this is going to be a puffing crossing, wouldn't be, it wouldn't work on that basis because the flashing amber is only like on a pedestrian crossing, not a junk signal control. Is that right? I have a note down here, flashing oh. pedestrian lights. Um, I'm happy to discuss that in more detail with Councillor Kilbane as to what he had in mind. Right. And again, pass that to the design team. Okay. Initial thoughts are flashing pedestrian lights is not something we have a means to achieve, right. but happy to work with him to see what we can. Okay. And linked to that was the question about advanced green versus a separate. Uh, cycle lights. Now I don't know whether that uh, the fa it will depend on whether the phasing is suitable for that in terms of turning so movements have, and so on. But we have implemented um, cycle lights at the bazaar schemes. Yeah. And if it is uh, possible to implement at this location, we would. I don't know if you have any in mind. Um, I don't know if they considered current lights. We will know about this morning whether we can look at whether whether they will fit. Yeah. I mean, that, that would seem to me, as has been suggested, would actually help but improve safety if cyclists yeah. have that five or ten, you know, ten second advance. It relates to that also, board, so can we review whether it's possible to increase the size of the uh, advanced start line on right. the southbound carriageway soon because of that movement that the cyclists have to make from now the curve yes. line right into the right hand right lane as well. Yep. So those two have been raised with the design team, they're aware of that and have looking into what we can do about that now. Okay, right. And I did uh, ask in a Private session, just a clarification about the, the rationale be behind moving the cycle lane to the near side, given that there's a right turn movement and the, the issue is about the width. Uh, if it's between two different traffic lanes, you need a greater width. Um, because otherwise, if particularly in that location, the, the traffic lanes are not necessarily wide enough for an HGV or a bus which means that you've got potentially more vulnerable in the, in the centre um, with a, a bus not, not actually fitting into the traffic That's great. lane. Yeah, current, current guidance standards, um, just, we don't have the width to put the central side of the lane anymore. The right. curbside side of the lane can be significantly narrower. Mm -hmm. um, we have enough width to do that, not enough for a central lane. So I, know, so I think, again, it's a, a, a detailed design, but as have, being familiar with the, the junction, I think... Um, as, as laid out, the, um, there's two, there's a head and a, a right turn lane and cyclists in the, on the new l line would be best advised to, to move out into the right turn lane to get to the advanced stop line, um, which means that when they're passing the end of the, I can't remember which street it is, the one immediately before the junction, um, they would need to be making that manoeuvre rather than following the, the um, feeder lane. Um, obviously, if the, the lights are on red and they've got time to get to that before the change, there's not an issue. But the concern I would have would be on the inside, if they're turning right, they use the feeder lane, then they're going to get traffic cutting across <coughs> where they're, when they're wanting to signal right. They've got the head movement cycles. So I think you know we might it might need to be looked at in terms of it might be as simple as a, a head and right turn symbol or something that indicates to cyclists the point at which they need to be changing lanes before the lane yep. before it widens out to two safety. lanes. A cyclist really should be getting into the line of traffic. Well, we'll ensure that the safety review considers that matter. But okay. obviously, it's a matter for yeah. the, the officers to advise to us to on what they regulate, the best. what the best rate. So obviously, uh, what happens within highway schemes is because of the physical constraints of the site is generally, or not generally, but is often a compromise. Yeah. Uh, therefore, we need to be advised by appropriately qualified officers and engineers yeah. as to the compromise that is I mean, struck. Look at that issue, that basically. Yeah. Fulfill our duties as a highways authority. Yeah. Uh, you know, you and I... But again, as you say, the, the, if there is that advance yes. 10 seconds, that could actually yes. answer the problem because it, it the may. cyclist is then getting away it, before the traffic behind it them. It may do indeed, uh, but obviously... It, Officers are committed to review those items that you've raised in the detailed okay. design, but what we can't do is uh, effectively uh, make a design, any design decisions within this decision session 
but our officers will consider okay. those concerns that have been raised and do uh, seek to address them to the extent right. that they can okay. be. Sorry, uh, did you have any other points you wanted to raise? I'm sorry. The uh, only point that has been raised that I don't think really we've currently um, addressed is the suggestion that we install speed humps on Bishop Port Road and right. outside the shops. Um, that has not been part of any of the works to date. Um, mm. I don't see that as part of this particular scheme. That would be outside of the scope of a, it would a be, junction yeah. improvement anyhow. It would, yeah. and they, obviously if there are concerned, local residents have uh, concerns with speed of traffic, then we do have a speed reduction scheme working across uh, York and North Yorkshire, uh, and there's opportunities for members of the public uh, to engage in that process to effectively, uh, that works through a, a series of measures. And then ultimately, if there is a, is it deemed to be an issue, then that would come to a decision <coughs> at a, a later date, but there is quite a considerable process for, in the terms of speed reduction for us, for us to get there. Mm -hmm. um, and just the only other point, I think, which was raised was about the need, if uh, option three is the one that is approved, that involves moving the cycle racks and the, the changing the landscaping. Um, so, I, I mean, I, again, that might be a, ma a matter of detail for negotiation, but having, at the moment, the, I think the suggested location for the racks is where the junction box is for the signalling equipment, so presumably that would be moved as part of the work in any case. Um, uh, but I think if wherever it's moved to, would need to take account of sight lines <coughs> that have been Indeed. commented on yeah, um, and it may be the opportunity to to remove the existing landscaping put it we've put in place something which is more in keeping with that desire about sight I think there was a concern some people have raised concerns about sight lines for traffic emerging from the car park because at the moment there's there's a uh, quite high bushes. Well, they were yesterday when I went past, they were you know, five foot um, high uh, bushes that stretch along that whole area, um, which would impact potentially on the crossing as well as on the access to and from the car park. I know that's not an issue, it's something that you're creating, but it's an opportunity to address if we're moving the cycle racks in any case, which we'd have to do on in option three. So, so in terms of the uh, options before me, uh, we've got options one, two and three. I must admit we have sort of talked in quite a bit of detail more so about options two and three because option one, as I see it, is, is fundamentally replacing the equipment and isn't it? It's basically replacing the, the equipment full stop full with stop. current Simple layouts. Scheme -based. Um, and I'm aware that all councillors um, have spent a considerable amount of time looking at this, discussing different options and also obviously the cycle campaign have put a lot of effort into thinking about yeah. how we might enhance um, this uh, provision at, at the same time. Um, I'm not inclined to uh, delay it, not least because, as I understand it, the Flood works have been delayed in any case, so if this work is going ahead, it would be done hopefully and out the way before Indeed. any diversions were put in place. Um, and certainly, I'm recommended here to approve option three um, because it meets the core aim of replacing life is got expired signal equipment. Uh, so that they can continue to equip, uh, but it does also take the opportunity, which certainly uh, the shopkeepers and the survey they did suggested would be um, a beneficial to the um, issues about promoting walking and cycling, yep. um, would be an um, option three, of, which includes an additional arm um, to cross the road in one stage rather than two stages, um, for which could in in addition to the benefits that it has for the individuals, it could potentially spread the sort of 
congestion which currently exists a bit around that corner near the shops yep. that the pedestrians are sort of choosing whichever is most convenient for them uh, to get across the road um, but I don't feel that the um, given what the the, the uh, modelling that officers have given about the Danish Star scheme I think that makes significant increase in terms of the delays um, which is something we might in due course come to but given that the, the equipment needs changing changing now um, I don't think that uh, the work involved in option three would necessarily pre preclude at some point in the future coming back to look at something along those lines um, without I mean it, it's as I understand and not technical but as I understand it it's it's easier to adjust the <coughs> electronics of equipment once it's in place um, in terms of phasing and so on than yes. the actual physical work which is needed now to re re replace the time ex expired equipment so on on that basis I'm prepared to approve option three going ahead um, as you suggested hopefully for implementation sometime in the autumn and, and that would be in consultation presumably with the traders association and local residents to try and minimize the impact on the christmas timing. shopping yeah. and, and that yeah. type of thing so yeah. we will consult with them in respect of timing and if mm. i may check uh, are you content to effectively add to the recommendation the commitments that officers have made to consider in the detailed yes. design. Yes, so to look at a, a detailed so design and things like not, advanced not, stop yeah, lines. And, so it's not and, a commitment to you know, do, but a commitment to, actually, a commitment to review and, to and review encompass where we can. And discuss with all councillors uh, or whoever's made the representations, basically. Yeah. 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 Thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't think we have any urgent business, as far as I'm aware. No, no, no. no urgent business. Okay, on that basis, I will close the meeting at 3.20. Thank you.